Good morning, guys. Another beautiful day during Monterey Car Week. Today, I am headed to the Quail to drive the new Lotus Amira. Then we're gonna do some awesome car spotting and potentially go to Laguna Seca. Some cool cars parked up on Ocean Avenue. Look at that. There's all of the Amiras pulling up to the event right now. Well, just pulled up to the Quail, about to drive the Lotus Amira for the first time. They've got some insane cars here. The new SUV, I'd love to get behind the wheel of this too, all electric. But check out some of the cars in the parking lot right now. Absolutely stunning Pagani Waira BC. Look at the roof scoop on this. Still to this day, one of the best cars I have ever reviewed. And what an absolutely beautiful car. Then we've got this gorgeous 997 GT3 RS over here next to a 765 LT. One of my favorite generations of Porsche GT3 RSs. But check this out, they've also got the Avaya Hypercar. Lotus is absolutely everywhere. All of the Amiras, but then look at this. The Avaya all electric hypercar. I'm hoping at some point to get behind the wheel of one of these. But the design language is absolutely stunning. Look at the rectangular Formula One style steering wheel. I bet this is absolutely insane. Time to get behind the wheel of the Amira and see what it's like to drive for the first time. Here we go, about to drive the Amira. This car is honestly absolutely stunning. We've got Christine in the passenger seat. What do you think so far? Love it. I really like the interior of this too. We've got two engine options, the V6 from Toyota and also a turbocharged four-cylinder from Mercedes AMG coming soon. This one isn't automatic, but hopefully we're gonna get one out in Los Angeles with the manual transmission. Let's go. The key for the Amira is actually gorgeous. I really like this. They've stepped up the interior by so much compared to the Evora, which I drove a little while ago. 10.2 inch digital display right here, 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, beautiful squared off steering wheel. I like the shifter drive mode selector here. Look at this, almost Lamborghini style flip up switch here for the start stop button. I'm excited, and they're gonna let you drive too. That is awesome, <laughs> what, a, what a bonus. Then you can see that V6 behind us. All right, let's roll. One of the best parts about this car is the fact that it doesn't have electronic assisted steering like every modern car. They've gone with a conventional hydraulic setup, so the steering feel is much, much better. Curious to see, this is a conventional six-speed automatic with a torque converter. The new car with the turbocharged four-cylinder from AMG has a double-clutch automated manual eight-speed. That's probably a better gearbox, but let's see. It actually shifts pretty fast. Oh, you can hear that supercharger whine. That's actually pretty awesome. Going to be doing a full point of view drive of this car, so make sure to see that video. And then when I'm back in LA and get the manual one, I'm going to do a dedicated review. But just initial impressions, this is such a better car than the previous generation of Aura, it's not even funny. This is the touring spec, so the suspension is a little bit softer. It's honestly so smooth and so easy to drive. And the six cylinder actually sounds really good. It's got these little backfires and that supercharger. What do you think? I like this car. I love it. The steering wheel feels so good in your hands. The thickness is perfect. The paddles also feel really good. Now, it doesn't have the fastest downshift response because it is a torque converter automatic, but it is better than I was expecting it to be. And the upshifts are pretty violent, actually. Really linear power band from that supercharged V6. I didn't think I was gonna like this as much as I do. Horsepower readout on the screen. That is pretty cool, and a G meter. And I really like the instrument cluster. That horizontal tachometer. Whoa, Gunther Works just passed by. Car week is in full effect. Even the speaker system is gorgeous in this. I haven't heard of KEF or KEF before, but I love that design. Amira on the sill. They actually made the sill smaller so it's easier to get in and out of the Amira. This is the first edition. Cool little badge work right there. Let's look at the exterior of the car because I think they did such a good job. It's honestly really beautiful and apparently produces the most downforce of any car in its class. Interestingly, even though it's got the engine in the back, the front doesn't actually have any storage space. I love the intake vent right here. Kind of similar to a smaller version of the Avaya 
beautiful wheels and brakes and the rear end is just spectacular. I'm impressed, honestly. We've got a small amount of storage space back here, but it is pretty deep. And then look how compact the packaging of this V6 is pretty wild, right behind your head. I wonder if you could fit in the trunk, maybe. <laughs> nah. <laughs> look at this. Christine behind the wheel of the Amira. I hadn't even driven one of these until today, so you drove one at the same time. Yeah, I'm cool like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's got a huge ego now. Gets behind the wheel of one press car and she doesn't know how to act. All right. Okay. Floor it. Okay. What are you looking for? No, you yeah. gotta put it in drive. Yeah, but this is, looks different. Yeah, so you just put your foot on the brake, right? Yeah. And then... Yeah, but where Now you're in first. Where do I see that, though? Where do you see what? That I'm in drive. Right here. So this is in first gear. Oh. <laughs> I usually look for the D. Yeah, well, classic. Classic. Just instantly to full throttle. <laughs> I love it. Good work. I am terrified. So sick. <laughs> Christine, all right. So she just said something legendary, but it is very true. She goes, the steering is like, you can feel it, <laughs> which is a very good way of saying that it has hydraulic steering instead of electronic steering. It does have a lot more feel than traditional cars, right? Yeah. We gotta work on your hand position. Keep them at nine and three the whole time. That's 10 and two. <laughs> nine and three, oh. like a clock. <laughs> I'm a teacher. Thoughts? I love it. <laughs> It was actually really cool seeing you drive this thing. It's so fun. Aww. It's so cool. And we lived. So <laughs> let's put it in a park so we still live. <laughs> Good work, honestly. Thanks. People think it's so weird that we fist bump. Why do we do that? I don't know, because we're chill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 959. Fun times driving the Amira. Now we are headed to the Zenvo house because they just released a brand new car that looks absolutely insane. And the horsepower figures are wild. Pulling up to the Zenvo mansion. This is one heck of an entrance. Yep. Well guys, how cool is this? First time seeing the Zenvo Aurora in person, the newest car from the Danish manufacturer, completely new. It's got a 6.6 .6 liter quad turbocharged V12 with a hybrid powertrain. In tour spec, it's got two electric motors and one in the gearbox for a total of 18 150 horsepower. The design language is absolutely insane. Not to say the TSRS wasn't absolutely gorgeous and ridiculous looking, but this has brought aerodynamics and functionality to a whole nother level. Look at the carbon fiber front splitter. It's completely open up using negative space. I love this section. It kind of has a blend between the Apollo IE and the Valkyrie in terms of its design while being original all at the same time. This is the Agile or Agile spec with the massive rear wing and then the Tour spec, which we'll see at Quail, has the 1850 horsepower. Now let's go ahead and open this thing up to check out the interior because it's got some really, really cool features. I love the fact that you can see the suspension setup, Olin Springs, the forged carbon fiber combined with the standard carbon fiber, but the interior has some features I have never seen before in any other car. All right, let's check it out. Taking a look at the interior now, look at how the seats are formed into the carbon fiber shell. Let's go ahead and climb inside because this dash has one of the most special things I have ever seen in a car. The dash honestly takes inspiration from high-end watches. Check this out. So for the gearing, it's not actually a screen, it's analog, and it shifts like a date window in a watch as it goes through the gear. So watch this, we've got the speedometer here, but if you press and hold this button for several seconds, the dash actually rotates kind of like a tourbillon inside of a watch to give you a digital display, and it also works on this side as well. 
I've never seen another car with this feature. And honestly, I think auto manufacturers are gonna start to copy this because it is just so cool. I love the dash layout, the center console area here with the climate controls. We got a suspension setting, looks like front lift button and start stop button, but it is just, I mean, this is as a race car as it gets in terms of an interior. I'm incredibly excited for Zenvo to see the new car and hopefully at some point experience this thing out on the road. Starting at three million bucks, I need to win the lottery because this thing is epic. Looks like a specking session going on for the Aurora. This house is beautiful. Huge shout out to the guys and gals from Zenvo for having me out there and showing me the new car. Honestly, it's extremely, extremely impressive. And hopefully sometime when the car is in full production, I can do a full review on it because I imagine that quad turbocharged V12 is going to sound insane. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.